anything for the record from the state? No. Or from the defense? No, thank you. Thank you. We'll see you at 7.30. Uh, let's go to Snap. Good morning. Good morning. If you feel you can comfortably and safely testify without a mask, that would be our preference at this time. Sure. Thank you. And then I would ask if you would stand and my clerk will administer the oath. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear firm the testimony you're about to give in this matter? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Thank you. Good morning. Could you please state your first and last name for the record and spell both? Lori Snap, L-O-R-I-S-N-A-P-P. -P. How are you employed, Ms. Snap? I work for American Family Insurance. And what is your title? Employee Relations Manager. And sometime this summer or into the fall, um, were you contacted by Dane County Sheriff's Office in connection to this case? Yes, I was. Um, and in particular, did they ask you to research whether or not Chandler Halderson was ever employed by American Family? Yes, they did. And what did you find out? I found no record of that person working for American Family. What about as a, one of their contractors? Did you, ever, did you research that? I did as well, and we found no record of um, that person working as a contractor. Did they also have you research whether or not Tom Selznick was ever an employee of American Family? Yes, they did. And was he ever an employee or a contract employee? No. Do any of your employees, as their official email, have a Proton Mail account? No. What is like the tag or the ending of the emails from American Family Insurance? at amfam.com. And how are your employees paid? Weekly, monthly, every six months, something else? Bi-weekly. Okay. No further questions. Cross-examination? No, thank you. Thank you. May this witness be excused and released? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You're released from your subpoena. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. I'll recall Brian Schunk to the stand. Good morning, Detective. Uh, I know you've testified a couple times. <clears throat> Some things make more sense, obviously, at, at certain times. Uh, yesterday, were you here when the footwear analyst testified as to shoe prints found on uh, the two tarps, the one that was found in the garbage can uh, near the torso and the one that was found in the barn? Were you here for that testimony? Yes. Uh, and I, I think you, like the rest of us, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe heard the testimony that a shoe print um, consistent with uh, shoes found in the Halderson home uh, was found on the tarp that was found in the garbage can, item C. Correct. Uh, okay. Uh, those shoes that were entered into evidence uh, and that the shoe print analyst said um, matched the prints found on that tarp, um, do you recall what size they were? Size 10 and a half. Um, and if we all think back to maybe two weeks ago now when we watched that long interview of you interviewing Mr. Halderson, uh, you were involved with Mr. Halderson personally and his arrest and, and booking into jail, correct? Yes. Uh, what size shoes was he wearing when he was booked into jail? He was also wearing a 10 and a half. Okay. Um, now, the other tarp, the barn tarp, as we've been calling it, um, that was in that big brown bag, we're not going to drag it out for right now, uh, but you've seen photographs of that tarp uh, laid out and, and spread out during the analysis in this case? Yes. Um, and I think I've asked others, but I'll ask you, does that a tarp to appear to be older um, or newer than the tarp that's found in the garbage can? It definitely appeared older. And what, what makes you say that? Like, how would you describe it? Uh, it was well used. I had, from what I had seen, appeared to be sawdust all over it, just dust in general. Sure. And yesterday, we heard the shoe print analyst testify as to a pair of, of I think, Ralph Lauren shoes that they thought there was a print on. Yes. Uh, in the search of the Halderson home, were any similar shoes found? That there, would match that? There was not. And if they were, would you have sent them out to the crime lab? Of course. In the course of this investigation, have you ever found those shoes? No. Do you have any idea whose shoes they are? No. Okay. Uh, do you have any idea how old that tarp is? I do not. I know there was uh, pictures that we had found on Krista Helderson's phone that included Bart working and, and building a table on it, so I know that it uh, was not new. 
Okay. Uh, and unlike the tarp in the garbage can, did that appear to be new? It did. And is it your suspicion that that is, in fact, the tarp that we saw Mr. Halverson purchase on July 2nd? Yes. Okay. Showing what's been marked in this case is exhibits number 576 and 577. Briefly, could you identify those? Yes, these were photos taken off of Krista Helderson's phone uh, of Bart working on a tarp in the garage at the Oak Springs address. Doing some sort of building project? Yes. All right, I'll move 576 and 577 in evidence. No, thank you. No objection. They are received. That's the published just briefly on the they may be Elmo. Looking at 576, is this the tarp uh, that we're talking about? Yes, it is. And uh, 577, uh, another tarp, or another photo of that tarp? Correct. Okay. And to you, does that appear to be the barn tarp? It does appear to be the barn tarp. Um, and Mr. Hollerson's not wearing those Ralph Lauren shoes here? Correct? No, it appears he was wearing A6. Okay. We just heard a good deal of testimony from Detective Sims, kind of re reading some of those emails. Um, did it become important in this investigation to look into whether Mr. Chandler Halderson was going to Madison College or MATC for school? Yes. Um, he was purporting to have, have gone there, telling people he was going there, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, did you, in fact, at some point, uh, did the Dane County Sheriff's Department subpoena records from Madison College to try to determine uh, when he was going there or if he was going there? Yes, we did. Okay. Showing what's been marked is exhibit number 503. Just in general, what is that? Looks like a certificate of authenticity from Madison College or MATC. And is that notarized on the, the last page? Yes, it is. Okay. And I know we all heard the judge read the stipulation, but I'll move 503 in evidence. No, okay. it is received. 504 and 505, what are we looking at there? 504 is going to be the Madison College unofficial transcripts of Chandler Helderson. Uh, 505 is also from Madison Area Technical College or Madison College. It's an enrollment verification for Chandler Helderson. And uh, this is an enrollment verification that was requested by the police this fall in preparation uh, for this trial? Correct. August 9th of 2021. Okay. I'll move 504 and 505 into evidence. No objection. They are received. Move to publish. They may be published. Starting with the, the transcripts, um, we'll zoom in just a bit. So we're looking at exhibit number 504, um, but spring of 2018 shows Mr. Halderson uh, was in fact enrolled at MATC, correct? It's on there, yes. All right, I took a couple classes, um, uh, leadership as an art, trigonometry, university physics, and uh, some sort of solar technology class, um, and actually completed some classes in the spring of 18, fair? Yes. All right. Summer of 2018, um, he enrolled for a few classes, general chemistry, basic uh, statistics, uh, and another solar class, and completed some classes there, summer of 18. Yes, completed some, and it looks like withdrew from another. Withdrew from the statistics class. Correct. Okay. Uh, moving to the fall of 2018, uh, there, Mr. Halderson, um, intro to sustainable design, uh, again, taking basic statistics, uh, intro to renewable energy, and he completed one, the design class, got an A, uh, failed the statistics class, and into the renewable energy class, looks like he withdrew, is that fair? Yes. All right. Going into 2019, spring of 2019, took a couple classes, environmental science, project management, weather and climate, um, an electronics class, and um, looks like there was a C in the project management class, but the rest he withdrew from? Correct. Okay. We see some additional classes now in the fall of 2019. This is on the second page. Um, 
Microsoft, it looks like Microsoft Word, uh, a couple levels of that, written communication, uh, exploration of um, something in technology, Cisco networking, uh, IT security awareness, enterprise client, psychology of human relations. Um, in all of these classes, he withdrew from half and, or a little less than half and failed the remainder, correct? Correct. The WNA it's, uh, withdrew with no attempt, meaning that it, the class was withdrawn sometime, I think it's the first 10 days of the course. And then going into fall of um, 2020, um, see some Microsoft Word classes, networking classes, uh, psychology, um, mostly withdrawn with a couple Fs. There, correct? Correct. And that fall of 2020 um, didn't complete any credits, but that was the last time that he was enrolled at MATC. Yes. Um, so after the fall. Of MA, at the fall of 2020, he was not a student there any longer from what you're able to, to glean from all these documents? Correct. I believe the end of that semester was uh, January 18th or so of 21. Sure. And if we look back um, in 19 and 20, he doesn't earn any credits, either withdraws or fails from all of those classes? Correct. All right. And so we'd have to go back to the spring of 19 um, when he got a C in something called project management um, to find the last class where any credits were earned. That's what I'm seeing. Okay. And then just to maybe a more easy way to view it, uh, they sent you something called an enrollment verification. We'll zoom out just a tad so everyone can see that. Um, but that shows that he was enrolled Three quarters in the spring of 18, half time in the summer, half time in the fall of 18, going into 19 in the spring, less than half, the fall, three quarters, and the fall, half time. Correct. Did you ever find any information in this case to indicate that Mr. Halderson was? attending classes or going to classes at MATC going into the spring of 2021 or into the summer of 2021? They did not have any records of that. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple of documents that are already in evidence. This morning, Detective Blank testified about this small burner phone, um, and we pulled out. It's not something we have to wear gloves for, but this was the burner phone I think Mr. Selzner testified was found in Chandler Halverson's desk. Correct, the Elcatel flip phone. Okay. And he produced a report when he tried to download what he could download uh, there, indicating a cell phone number for that phone. Correct. And what was that cell phone number? 608-598-7868. Okay. And earlier in the trial, a couple weeks ago, we passed around this document to the jury, um, was, uh, I believe, testified in this case to be a uh, paper found on the desk of Bart Halderson with some written notes on it, giving a phone number for someone Bart Halderson spoke to uh, at MATC. Who was the person uh, he believes he spoke to? Correct. Uh, this is an email that Bart Halderson had uh, saying that he had spoken with Daniel Spieth. Uh, at the bottom of, or, I'm sorry, and part of the body of that, he does say that uh, Daniel sounds just like Chaz, who we know is what the family called Chandler, on the phone. Uh, the bottom of this email says Daniel's contact information is cell 608-598-7868, which is the same phone number I just read, which is registered to the flip phone. So the burner phone found in the desk is the same as the email that the jury looked at um, with that phone number? Correct. Okay. There's a name written on this document and circled. Can you tell us what that name is? Omar Job. Okay. And that became a point of interest for the police in this investigation? It did. Okay. I don't think we need to hear. Be okay. Uh, 
the cell phones that you were able to access in this case, they were downloaded by Mr. Blank and other analysts, and then the detectives review those downloads, correct? Correct. For the most part. Many people at some times can look at them, but you do look at some of these downloads. Yes. Okay. Was Bart Halderson's cell phone one of these cell phones that was able to be accessed in this case? Yes, we did access that phone. And I'm showing what's been marked as exhibit number 497. Um, just in general, do you know what this is to be? A USB. Containing the download of Bart's phone? Correct. Okay. As we've talked about, those downloads aren't something that you can really look at very easily, um, so reports are printed off with some of the data that's in those phones? Correct. It was a report printed off with Bart Halderson's messages and call logs and things of that sort that were relevant to this case? Yes. Okay. Showing what's been marked in this case is exhibit number 498. Could you tell me what that is? Yes, the title page says that it's uh, the contents are Bart Halderson's Celebrate Instant Message Report. Okay. And that's a report of essentially some of the activity on the phone, including some of the outgoing call or outgoing calls and text messages and things of that sort? Correct. All right. Um, specifically, I want to draw your attention to page 16 of this report from Bart Halderson's cell phone. Does it indicate on June 29th, 2021, about two in the afternoon, um, did he make a phone call? Yes, it shows 2.04 p.m. that Bart had made a phone call to 608-246-6210, and the phone call lasted 19 minutes and 46 seconds. Uh, and so you're the detective in this case. Did you, did you call that number and figure out what that number was? Yes, that phone number is Madison College. Okay. I'll move uh, 498 the evidence at this point, uh, 497 as well. Any objection? Yes. No further questions at this time. Cross-examination. No, thank you. Thank you, Detective. You can return back to the table. Thank you. Yeah. Attorney Brown. State calls Kate Yoakum to the stand. Good morning. 
I would ask if you believe you can do so safely and responsibly that you testify without a mask, as long as you're comfortable with doing that under these circumstances. I will do so. Thank you so much. <laughs> please proceed. Good morning. Could you please state both your first and last name and spell both for the record? Sure. My name is Kate Jockamson, Kate, K-A-T-E, and last name Jockamson, J-O-C-H-I-M-S-E-N. How are you employed? I work for Madison College. And specifically, what is your title? The Director of Employee Relations. And um, during the course of this investigation, were you and other employees at Madison College or MATC contacted by the Dane County Sheriff's Office in connection to this case? Yes. Um, and were you asked specifically if three individuals ever worked for Madison College or MATC? Yes. Um, is, was one of those individuals Aaron Hoover? Yes. Um, and were you able to look in a database or some historic information to see if Aaron Hoover had ever worked for Madison College or MATC? I was able to look. And was Aaron Hoover ever an employee? No. Were you able to repeat the same process with Alyssa Brandt? Yes. So, and you did that, in fact, with two different spellings, B-R-A-N-T and B-R-A-N-D-T. That's correct. And was she ever an employee for MATC or Madison College? No. What about Daniel Spieth? No. Was he ever an employee for Madison College or MATC? No. Can I ask you, what is the end part of every employee's email who works for Madison College? MadisonCollege.edu. No one uses a Gmail account as their official Madison College email? No. Okay. No further questions. Cross-examination. No, thank you. May this witness be released and excused. Uh, yes. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good rest of your day. I'm glad I found it. Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed with another witness, I have to read to you a, a, another agreed fact, something that the parties have stipulated to that you must accept as proven. Uh, specifically, in this case, the district attorney and the defendant's attorneys have stipulated to the following facts. Chandler Halderson has never been employed by SpaceX or sought a job at that company. Please proceed. This time, the state calls uh, Stephen Fair. Good morning. If you believe you can testify safely and responsibly without a mask, that would be the preference if you can. If you're not comfortable doing that, uh, let me know. I can remove my mask. All right. Thank you very much. And please proceed. Good morning, sir. Would you please state and spell your name for the record? Yeah. My name is Stephen Farr, F-A-R-R-E-R. -R -R. And uh, how are you employed, sir? I work for BDO and USA. What, what is BDO USA? Uh, it's an accounting firm that provides tax, audit, and advisory services. Uh, what is your role at BDO? I am an enterprise support supervisor. Okay. Uh, tell me about that job. What is that job? So our team, I, work, I have a team of 13 individuals, and we are responsible for the firm's large enterprise-wide applications like email, uh, instant message, those kind of things. Sure. Uh, how big of a company is BDO? Uh, we roughly have about 12,000 employees and partners. And yeah. Uh, where are you based out of? Uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Uh, was one of your employees at BDO, I, I imagine you've learned eventually, but was one of your employees a guy by the name of Bart Halderson? Yes, that's correct. Um, and you became involved in Bart Halderson's uh, email and calendar and things of that sort at the request of some sheriff's deputies from here in Dane County? Yes. Okay. Did you know Bart before this? Not that I can recall. Okay. Um, tell me about, uh, just briefly, um, the computers that employees of BDO have at home when they work from home? Yep, so the firm kind of supplies a laptop computer. Most of them are the same, and they're given to all of the uh, employees. 
you. And were people working from home more frequently than usual since the pandemic? Yes, that's correct. Including uh, in July of 2021? Yes. Okay. And Bart Halderson was one of those employees? Yes. Okay. Uh, the computer that Bart Halderson had at home, uh, did it have any uh, not ordinary uh, security measures to it, like a retina scanner or a fingerprint scanner? No, it did not. Okay. Um, in general, it was just a computer that if you you could log into with a username and password? Yes. Okay. Um, now, in the course of this case, you learned that, that Bart Halderson had died, and you were asked by some police to essentially freeze any of his accounts. Yes. Okay. Um, and at some point, police and myself and others have asked you questions. And one of those questions has been, uh, when was the last uh, email sent by Mr. Bart Halderson? Objection to leading questions. Did it? That's fine. Uh, did I ask you a question regarding the last email regarding Mr. Bart Halderson sending from his account? Yes. Okay. And did you provide that email to police? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you what's been marked in this case, exhibit number 486. And just briefly, uh, what is the first page of this? Uh, it is an email that was sent um, from myself to uh, Brian Schunk. Okay. And what did you indicate that you were doing in this email? I was attaching uh, some screenshots from Bart's last emails that were sent from his mailbox. Okay. And we'll go to the second page of uh, 486. Uh, is that the email that you sent? Yes, that's correct. All right. Um, I'll move uh, 486 in evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. Uh, this email, did it have any significance other than it was the last email sent from Bart Halderson's account? Not that I was aware of. Okay. And just what is the date and time of that email being sent? Uh, 3.07 p.m. Eastern at uh, July 1st, 2021. 3.07 Eastern? Yes. Okay. And uh, you've re have you reviewed uh, Mr. Halderson's email account a couple times now in the course of this case? Yes, I have. And was that, in fact, the last email that he sent? Yes. So 2.07 Central? Yes. Okay showing you uh, what's the third page of that exhibit, which is exhibit number 486. What am I looking at there? It's his calendar, work calendar. Sure. And uh, what's the time range for that calendar? June 27th through July 3rd, 2021. Okay. And was this from Mr. Halderson's account that you locked up yes. from video? Move to publish um, 486. You may. So just looking at that second page, there's no significance perhaps to the email, um, but what you were referencing uh, was the time and date that it was sent. And that Correct. Was, uh, Correct. All right. And as to the calendar, does this appear to be an Outlook calendar maintained by people at BDO? Yes. And so... Is there any significance to the different colors that people use on their calendar? No. Yeah, it's customizable. Got it. And so if we look right here, um, Thursday the 1st, um, and scheduled here uh, just around 3 o'clock, and I'll have you read it because it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, but on Mr. Halderson's calendar on July 1st, uh, around uh, 3, uh, what does that say? Krista, doctor appointment? Sorry, you're looking at the 30th. Look oh. at the first. Chaz, M-A-T-C. No further questions. Cross-examination. Good morning, Mr. Farr. How are you? Good. So a couple of questions for you. The state mentioned something about Mr. Halderson's um, BART's laptop, um, and that is a work-issued laptop, correct? Correct. So you're pretty familiar with that laptop and how it's used? Yes. Um, the state mentioned something about no fancy equipment, if you will, to log into that computer. Is that correct? Correct. Um, 
not only did you provide the emails shown, but you provided different information to the deputy sheriff that you spoke to, correct? Correct. And I believe the contact person was actually Detective Shock. I believe so, yes. So along with emails um, and that calendar invite or that calendar, you also provided information on Mr. Halderson's login, correct? Yes. And with the login information, that's something that's generated. Um, it, it's not something that Bart himself put in a spreadsheet. It's something that's generated through some kind of computer program that you, you use. Correct. Um, now, with that spreadsheet that you provided about the logins, um, could you give us a little more information on, on what exactly was provided in that spreadsheet? Do you have a copy of that spreadsheet? Because I, I, I know I sent a couple, and I, I want to make sure yes. I, I speak So clearly. actually, um, give me a second to get that ready for you. Uh, it's a copy of a couple of emails I had sent to uh, uh, Richard Bennett about some of the log information, login information for Balthard and the Sins computer. And Richard Bennett, was that someone from the Deputy Sheriff's Department? Correct. Perfect. And does that look like a true and accurate copy of the email and the spreadsheet that you provided? Yes. Um, you will get into evidence. Any objection? I uh, no. No. It is received. All right. So I'll leave that there for you if you need to refresh your collection. Um, but I believe my question was, what exactly was it that you provided with that spreadsheet? So the, the spreadsheet had a record of when the laptop was locked or unlocked. And for it to be locked or unlocked, was some kind of password required? A password is used to unlock the computer. And that password, is it one where you only have a certain number of entries to try before it locks you out and you have to call someone from IT? Yes. Do you know how um, many logs or how many attempts you have? I do not offhand. Okay. Um, was there any other kind of login that a password was required? There are several um, applications that we have that you could use a password to log into. And could you briefly tell us some of those? Um, if they're included in that spreadsheet? They are not included in the spreadsheet, no. This is strictly just the computer. Okay, so what else does that spreadsheet have? Does it have anything else about any kind of um, last login that Mr. Halderson would have had? No, nope, it just has the login, log off, and, and computer restarts and shutdowns. And is it something that you would require your employees to shut down their computer regularly? We do advise our employees to shut down regularly. Okay, and based on that spreadsheet, when is the last login for Mr. Halderson, or log out, excuse me? I 
the last logout would have been July 1st at 8.07 Eastern. 8.07 Eastern time. 8.07 p.m. Eastern. And that would have required some kind of passcode. That is the log off, so there's no passcode when you log off. You just turn off the computer. Well, your computer will either turn off automatically if you don't do anything for 20 minutes, or you can manually log off your computer. Okay. So then that would mean that at some point, at least the computer was active um, roughly a little before 8.07 Eastern time. It would either have to be active or if you had a video playing at the same time, that would keep your computer from becoming locked automatically. Does that spreadsheet also tell you when was the last login that would have required some kind of password? Yes. And when was that? Five thirteen p.m. Eastern on July first. So from five thirteen Eastern to roughly about eight oh seven Eastern, the computer was active the whole time. Correct. Thank you. No further questions. Redirect. And I'll take that back from you. He, he could, if you wouldn't mind, you could keep it for a second. Okay. Redirect. Sure. Uh, so five thirteen Eastern, meaning four thirteen Central, was the last verifiable time that that computer was logged into. Correct. Are and. We've had discussions about this, have we not? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any way that you can tell who logged into the computer at 4.13 p.m.? No. Okay. Um, are you able to tell at all what was being done on that computer at 4.13? Not with these logs, no. Sure. Um, and you've had conversation, have you had conversations with law enforcement uh, regarding um, trying to figure out what was going on on that computer? Yes. And are you able to tell? Not concretely, no. Uh, so the last verifiable time uh, that you're able to determine someone manually was doing something on that computer is that login time at just after four. Uh, Correct. Central. Okay. Um, and you said things could be keeping the computer active. What types of things keep the computer active for long periods of time? Objection, so you, speculation. Overruled. You can answer. So if you were doing a training and it had a video component to it, uh, that would keep your computer from being uh, locked out. If you're watching YouTube and you had a video open, that would keep your computer from being locked out. Um, but in terms of verifiable information on the computer, we talked about the last email that was sent. No email was sent when that computer was logged back into at 4 o'clock? Correct. Uh, and I'll ask it, perhaps I already have, and I hate to be it's a redundant, but just want to make, make sure I'm clear. Are you able to determine based on any of your programs that you have access to or the data you've looked at whether anything other than logging into the computer was done after 4 o'clock or that, that time at 4 o'clock? We weren't able to, no. Okay. Um, in terms of passwords, this is, just, is this just the normal thing you look at when you unlock your computer? You have your username and you enter a password? Yes. Um, do you know who had Mr. Halderson's passwords? I don't know. Uh, in the course of this investigation, have I and police um, provide information to you that Mr. Halderson was a bit perhaps loose with his passwords? Yes. In fact, I've showed you documents in this case. I'll show you what's been admitted into evidence is 203. Um, you've seen this document before? Yes, I have. And what does that appear to be? A list of username and passwords. Um, and most of these usernames you're able to tell from the initials and the name of the user who, who appears to be the user. Bart. Okay. So if Bart Halderson's password, for instance, was on a document, I'm not saying this document, but a password document or a post-it note uh, sitting next to the computer, you would have no way of knowing who logged onto that computer at 4 o'clock. Correct. Okay. So if someone wanted to log on, throw on a YouTube playlist of, of music and listen to music on that computer, you wouldn't know who was on there. Correct. Okay. Are you able to tell um, what Bart Halderson's password was from your data? No. Uh, and I asked you to try, didn't I? Yes. Okay. No further questions. Any recross? Yes. That spreadsheet that the state just showed you, um, were you able to determine what the password and the username were from that spreadsheet that they provided? We tried a few of those passwords and they we're not, we were not able to succeed. 
And you also mentioned that there was how many logins that you were able to try before it booted you out or kicked you out? I don't know off the top of my head. But there was a limit? Yes. No further questions. Thank you. May this witness be excused? He may. And released? Yes. Thank you, sir. I'll grab the spreadsheet. And Thank then you. perhaps Ms. Doro and I should approach real quick to talk about that issue we had brought up a second sure. ago. Attorney Brown. The state calls Omar Job. Good morning, sir. I'm going to go with that gentleman right there. Good morning, sir. If you believe you can do so safely and responsibly, testifying without a mask would be our preference if you're comfortable doing that. Yes. Thank you. Go ahead and remove the mask. And then if you want to angle the microphone so that it's directly in front of you, that will also help because the, the blowers have turned on and they create a level of background noise. Okay. Thank you. Go right ahead. Sure. Good morning, sir. Would you mind telling us your name and spelling it out for the jury? My name is Omar Job, uh, O-M-A-R-J-O-B-E. And sir, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work as an enrollment coordinator at Madison College. And uh, tell me a little bit about that job. What do you do in that job? Uh, we are customer service that, you know, like one-stop shop that help different departments. We support different departments like financial aid, enrollment, records, admissions, and triage order of calls in different parts of uh, different departments within the college. Uh, when people call, uh, just, give us a, just give us a sample of, of last time you worked, what kind of calls are you getting? We got calls about uh, admissions. Uh, we walk them through how to get admitted and enrolled in classes, uh, mostly financial aid, like I said, records, obtaining their transcripts. Those are the kind of calls that we manage daily. And how long have you been doing this work? Uh, altogether, eight years. Started. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Started as a student and transitioned in different positions. When you um, do, you get a lot of calls. Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember all of them? No. Are sometimes they recorded? Recently, we started recording them like about like I'd say two years ago. Okay. Um, Last year, um, you were contacted by the, the police at some point regarding one of these calls you had? Yes. And you, did you speak to the police? Yes. Did they ask you about a call that you maybe had with someone about Chandler Halderson in July uh, of, uh, or sorry, June of 2021? Yes. Uh, in fact, the very end of June, June 29th, I believe? I remember the date, but okay. yes. Uh, if, if uh, all right. And was that call recorded? Yes. Okay. Um, you've listened. Have you listened to that call? Yes. Um, and I'm going to show you just what's, there's a number on the bottom. It's 496. It's a kind of an oddly designed transcript. But just even reading the first little bit of that, does that appear to be the call that you had uh, with this person regarding someone named Chandler Halderson? Yes. All right. I'll take that back from you. I will move uh, 496 into evidence, and I'll represent for the record 495 to be the call and move the call into evidence as well. Any other objections? No further objection. Thank you. It is received. Uh, you, I think I asked you, but we played the call for you and you listened to it at one point? Yes. Uh, do you have any independent memory of this call at all? No. Um, do you know Chandler Halderson? No. Do you know anyone named Bart Halderson? No. Um, when you listened to the call, were you able to tell, though, that it was you on the phone? Yes. All right. Uh, so I'll, if we could have HDMI... Uh, left. I'll plug my computer in. 
folks, it's been a little while since we've had just an audio recording. I'll remind you of the instruction that what you hear is the evidence. If you don't believe the transcript that's shown on the screen matches what you're hearing, you should go with what you're hearing. The transcript is provided for your convenience. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, all right, we're gonna listen to um, a call. Give me one second. Let me make sure we're queued up appropriately and the volume is on. This should appear on the screen in front of you, sir. Mr. Job, the computer monitor should carry whatever is on the big screen so you don't have to look in that and, direction. Uh, the call's about 17 minutes long, so I apologize, Mr. Job, you're gonna sit there for a second, but if you need a glass of water, there's one right there, um, and I'll just begin playing uh, at, the, at the beginning. Can you make sure the volume's up on your end? Hi, um, I'm trying to get an appointment scheduled to meet with somebody um, to maybe just get a copy of the transcript and also a printed copy of a certificate that was earned and, and uh, you know, other degree verification. Okay. How, how, do, how do we get that done? Okay, for the degree, you have to download the duplicate uh, diploma form and send it in with a, with a check or a money order of four dollars for the diploma to be mailed back to you. For the transcript, you have to go online and request it. Yeah, I tried requesting on, online and we never got them. And I've spent I don't know how many times doing that and at eight bucks a piece, so I'm not willing to do that again. Why is that letting you request your transcript? It's not my system, it's your system, so don't ask me questions like that. Sure. I'll pause it at um, 108. Thank you. May we approach? Sure. Yeah, anybody needs to stand up and stretch, go right ahead. Hi, um, I'm trying to get an appointment scheduled to meet with somebody um, to maybe just get a copy of the transcript and also a printed copy of a certificate that was earned and and uh, you know other degree verification. Okay. How, how do we, how do we get that done? Okay, for the degree, you have to. <laughs> Sounds like the issue is not resolving, so we'll probably need to take a small break. All right. Do you? Um... It's a slightly early for lunch, but at the same time, I don't know if you think it will. I think it might take 10 minutes. Our tech person is on his way out. OK. All right. Um, folks, do you want to just re relax here? Or would you like to go back to the jury room and, and come back? Um, I'm fine if you're. Okay, just being here. Unfortunately, I'll note we may need to be using the screen, so if that matters for your decision and where everyone sure. stays. Um, well, let's do this. Let's do this. And sometimes we wing it. I'm going to ask Randy to take you back to the jury room. He'll inform you whether we're taking an early lunch or not. I'm not going to bring you back here if we have to make that decision. I'll just tell you now, if I don't see you before the lunch break, do follow the uh, requirements that you followed every day uh, in not discussing the case with yourselves or even discussing the frustration about technology. <laughs> That's tempting. And, and do, uh, do avoid overhearing or researching or finding out or seeking any information about the case. If we're able to get this fixed quickly, we'll get you back in here. Otherwise, um, Randy will let you know if it's the lunch break. Certainly, uh, we'll do our best. Go ahead. All rise to the jury.